Hello again and welcome to another Michigan Military Technical and Historical Society Museum uh, restoration project uh, video. Uh, this one probably should be titled the What Did We Get Ourselves Into This Time episode. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to our newest uh, acquisition. Uh, we have a uh, 1962 Ford built uh, M151. Uh, this vehicle was is one of the vehicles that was in the U.S. Army uh, museum system and was deemed excess and put up for disposal. Uh, so we uh, we were awarded this vehicle uh, through the uh, through the GSAX and uh, State of Michigan DTMB program. Uh, traveled down to Anniston this past week, uh, Alabama, and loaded on a trailer and brought it home. Uh, as you can see, this vehicle appears to have been an outdoor display at uh, some army museum, just what I'm guessing from the looks of it. So if any of our old uh, army museum system folks are watching this and recognize this critter, uh, drop us a line and maybe tell us a little bit of history on where it came from and if you know some of the background on it. So uh, I've already started kind of stripping stuff out of it. We've pulled the seats out mainly so that I can ex access the, uh, get a better view of the floor. Uh, so you can kind of see, it's it's definitely crunchy. Uh, I, I don't think this gas tank is savable. And it's very full of water, which I will have to deal with at some point in the near future. So I want to get that out so I can look at the floor underneath the gas tank. Uh, at some point in its life, it was picked up with a forklift. So there, there's some damage to the body and the drive shaft is very bent. Uh, the front axle shafts are missing. Uh, the windshield was replaced with a piece of plexiglass, which is over there. I'm guessing that was probably part of its outdoor exhibit existence. Uh, it's very baked. Uh, the engine is here, but uh, I'm guessing it's seized up just judging from the looks of what you can see through this filler hole. Uh, but I'm not sure what where we're going to go with this yet. So the it does fit into the museum's Jeeps of Ford collection, being a Ford built uh, 62. So this is a somewhat early M151, not super early, but uh, I mean, it's, it's rough. It's but it's not the worst I've seen. There's definitely a lot of work that's going to have to be done here. Uh, even if we just want to make this into a cosmetic display, there's still a lot of work. We got to. We definitely have to stop this rust from getting any worse. Uh, stabilize a lot of this stuff. Clean it up. So, as we get deeper into it, we'll make uh, some assessments. So you're probably all looking at. At, at this thing here and wondering what in the name of God is that? Uh, so this is a, a, a French built NTAC uh, anti-tank missile system uh, or at least parts of it. There's a lot missing. Uh, these frames here, the NTAC missiles came sh shipped in these metal crates that would clip into this frame and they were fired from, from the crate uh, there were four missiles up here in the ready to go, and then there's racks down here to hold three more. So it's, I think it's somewhat odd that you have a four missile launching system, but you only have the capability to reload three of them. Uh, the gunner sat in the passenger seat, which was a swivel, uh, which we do have, and then there was like a joystick thing, but in the guidance system, which we are mi we are missing all of that. Uh, it is a somewhat unusual system. It was only deployed by the U.S. Army for a brief period of time, at least in the ground mount version. My understanding is we use these missiles on helicopters for a number of years. But this ground mounted version, uh, Jeep mounted version, is a somewhat of an oddity. Uh, the French, I found a lot, there's, the French used it quite a bit. And I found some pictures of it in Belgian service mounted on the uh, M38 and the Canadians also use it mounted on M38 A1s. Uh, the French mounted on the uh, Hotchkiss M201, and the Americans put it on 
the M151. Uh, so, if anybody has any information on this particular system in U.S. service, we would love to hear about it because we're running into some... I mean, we've only had it for a couple days now, but uh, it's there's not a lot of readily available information on it. I uh, would love to find a TM for to find out how this thing... Because this, this thing, open it unfolds. And I'm guessing these little levers here have something to do with it. They are completely seized. So it's a, it'll make for an interesting uh, exhibit in the museum. Uh, somewhat of an oddity. I'm not sure what we're going to do about the, we, the, the, launch, the boxes themselves. Uh, I've heard rumors that there are some out there in collections. Uh, the ones that were on this Jeep when we picked it up, somebody had demilled them. It looks like they whacked them with an axe pretty good. They were chopped up. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to do anything with those. So at this point, not really sure how we're going to go forward with this. Just kind of trying to get an assessment and figure out what we're doing. Right now I'm just cleaning it. Uh, I filled our shop vac just with the junk I sucked out of out of the compartments here. Uh, it was sitting outside in Alabama. I had a, collected a large amount of stuff in it. Uh, I had to evict uh, several wa uh, wasp colonies out of it. They, I don't know if they were unhappy about being evicted or if they were more unhappy that they were in Michigan, and it and they didn't know what to do with the cold that we the cooler weather. Which was good. They were a bit they were a bit lethargic, and so they were easy to contend with. So, so here's kind of our walk around. Again, not a hundred percent sure how we're going to attack this, but uh, step one is to kind of clean it up, make an assessment, figure out what's missing, and uh, go from there. Uh, I always like to start a new project by picking a small item off of the new project and restoring it. So uh, I started on this one. I did the data plate for it last night. It cleaned up real nice. And it's just sort of my way of motivating myself to, to get something done. I, I'll pick some small part, clean it up, paint it, and then I can say, look, I did, something is done. So there's our data plate. It's going to go in a Ziploc bag here and go on the shelf and hopefully someday, one day soon, it will be reunited with the vehicle that it came off of. But uh, So that's about it. Uh, it's getting dark here and the bugs are starting to come out and fly into the garage and so it's time for me to, time for me to close up shop and go in the house and sit on the couch for a while. So stay tuned. We'll... We'll have some more for you uh, as we uh, progress on this and figure out what we're going to do. And then I also have to come do a, a final video on our Clark CT6 Mill 44, which is pretty much done. I'm just waiting for the seat to come back from the upholstery shop. And then once that happens, we'll probably do a full walk around video on that and show everybody what it looks like uh, finished. So it's over there, it's covered up. And as soon as I get that seat back, from the uh, from the upholster, it's going to get put on, and uh, that this bad boy will be done. Uh, Clark bulldozer is kind of shoved back in the corner there for the for the time being. Got it covered up. Um, hoping that I'll be able to get some work done on it uh, through the winter while we uh, figure out exactly one of the you know we one of the things is is that the conditions of getting this Jeep is that we have to put it on display within 12 months of acquiring it. So I'm not sure how much of a restoration will get done on this in 12 months. Uh, I'm, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, stay tuned. So y'all have a good, good day. Good night.